Hello folks, welcome again. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And as you can tell, I actually realized that I had to adjust the lighting. So I put the proper lighting up. So hopefully my little camera here. I guess that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Trust me, this is the reason why it's the Hobo Studios. Oh, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas! Yes, as you know, it is Christmas, and it tends to be a very chaotic season of the year. Uh, that's why I haven't actually posted videos. Well, it Thursday, though. Well, Wednesday night. Yeah, was it Wednesday night? Might have been Thursday morning. I don't care. You can check out my Daytona Beach Bonfire League videos there. A um, couple news and notes. Oh, I have to do that, too. Well, I got a lot of editing to do. Um, the one, the only, Hobo Tom, is going to be going to AEW. AEW. And for some reason, I have I got an upgrade in seats. Because I was going to sit in the cheap seats. Now I'm sitting, I think, right behind the hard camera almost. Oh, we'll see. When I'm there and not having to pay for those for set tickets, then I'll truly be thankful. But I still foresee shenanigans happening. And talking about shenanigans, um, it's a very unusual week. Again, it was Christmas week, so there was no e AEW. And I do apologize for the you no know, Impact Wrestling on Christmas Eve. I figured they would have something taped. I don't know. I'm sorry, folks. So for those people that tried to watch my live stream, um, I'll be doing the same thing <laughs> on New Year's Eve. I hope, because I have off that day. There's so much to get done that day. The next 72 hours suck. But enough about that. I have some shout outs, folks. Let's see here. I guess that is a name. Ladder match. You, sir, have earned that six count.
Real Rogers 2002. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar. And let's see here. Final one. Oh. CD15. You, sir, enjoy that beatbox briefcase. And again, I'd like to thank all those people that interacted with me. Again, if you'd like to interact, or if you like your character posted at the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League, such as Bum Slicks, Dan Blaze, Life to Change, uh, Lil Fettuccine, 69, and I guess that was the last one I made. I might have put one more. In, but I forget who though. Full finish. I don't know if, if I miss you. I'm sorry, but you, sir, but all of you guys are because you've been such loyal fans. You actually have your own character in the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. And now let's talk about, and with all that stuff being said and done, let's talk about some NXT. NXT. Yes, AEW. Normally, I don't watch NXT because uh, Wednesday night, I kind of reserve for AEW. That's kind of the bigger of the two shows. But because there was no AEW, so it's NXT. And it was a fun start. Roderick Strong's there singing Christmas songs. I'm um, Actually, I think he was singing the generic Christmas song. It's a holly jolly Christmas. As we got to the NWA, they were singing some Catholic Christmas hymns. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, so Roger Strong singing some Christmas songs. It's always cool. And uh, we start off with the first match: Roderick Strong versus Austin Theory. It was a classic wrestling match. I mean, Roddy just seemed to be toying with him for a while. It was arm locks and wrist locks for a long time. I was shocked. This was a little bit longer match than I would have expected. Austin Theory to give. Um, Austin Theory, actually, he does have some pretty good offense. Um, he does that standing moonsault, which is always fun to see. If I couldn't do that, I'd probably break my neck. Uh, what else is there? Uh, again, the, the <laughs> Roderick Strong is the Messiah of the Backbreaker. I don't even know what. It's just like a, a back to something. Backbreaker on the top turnbuckle. Oh, that looked rough. Uh, was this? And then uh, Theory hit his cross leg suplex on the second hardest part of the ring. Remember, the hardest part of the ring is actually the ring post itself. Second hardest part is the apron. Hit that, and I'm like, whoa. Awesome Theory did enough where I'm like, could he actually win? But no, because Roderick Strong eventually comes back with the end of heartache. Into the strong lock, which is just like on uh, Walls of Jericho, but when Chris Jericho wants to be nasty, 
this was a fun match. Hey, it's Christmas. Um, I, I know it was taped. Because they were like going back and forth between there and Madison Garden. Yeah, it was Madison Square Garden. I think. Or was it the Barclays? I don't know. It was like between Full Sail and New York. So this was a fun match. Roderick Strong went over, as he should. I'm honestly shocked that the match took as long as it did. This should have been really a glorified squash match. Oh, it was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then next we had Jack Gallagher taking on Isaiah Swerve Scott. Again, this was really more of a submission style match. Very technical. A lot of like, like, like wrist locks. Uh, classical British joint manipulation by by actually both Jack, Gall Jack Gallagher and uh, Swerve Scott. That was so fast though. And this actually became kind of a submission match. It's different. Not bad. It was slow, though, I think. Uh, once Jack Gallagher got involved, um, turned into a battle of chops. It was really submission-based. It was good. Um, and I went to battle of chops. And then, oh, Jack hit that headbutt out of nowhere. Sometimes I, sometimes I think that hurts him more than it does the other opponent. Again, from arm bars, and then he finally got out to the headbutt. And then Isaiah Swerve Scott hit his house call, his finishing move. It was a good match. Um, I do enjoy some Mitch and wrestling. I'll upgrade it, actually, from what I have. Because originally it was a ham sesh because it was slow. But I'm like, yeah, it's good, though. I enjoyed it. It's a cheeseburger match. Then we had Candice LeRae taking on Tainara Conti. Give him a last name. Doesn't hurt. Tainara. Uh, Tainara again goes for a series of quick kicks against Candice LeRae. And after that, it's all Candice LeRae. And there was some, like, I don't know what it was, but there was some, like, awkward fall in the turnbuckle. Oof. Like it hurt someone. I don't know who. And again, it's like, why is Candice LeRae taking her time with this match? I mean, it's not, it's not just another jobber. She does do a great Asai Moonsault, which is always fun to watch. I think that was like her finish of the match. Tainara, oh, I hate to say it, she's going to be a jobber for life. Parts of this match were good. Parts of this match were, again, that awkward falls like that's not even close to being smooth it was okay I mean, it wasn't horrible I think I could have done better because one I wouldn't have done stupid stuff like that but it was a uh, can of soup I think the big reason is that they're Treating Candice LeRae like a good wrestler. Not the star she was. She's getting the same treatment, WWE. Oh, there's my cat. That they gave my princess, Kimberly. Oh, I should. Oh. Wow, I should do that. Sometime. You're my princess, Kimberly. Not my phone and off. I'll go get it later. I'll, I'll check it between breaks. Uh, but then we had Donovan Dijakovic taking on Bronsery. This was great. This was big versus strong. Uh, Donovan Dijakovic, obviously the master of the headlock. And then they were chanting Baby Yoda. This crowd was bored. My cat really doesn't know what to do. She knows it's been a while since I've had these lights on. So she's just over there like, Should I going? Why is it weird? It's different looking. He's sniffing the carpet because I actually did have to vacuum, so the whole place does smell a little bit different to her, I'm sure. Doesn't have cat odor all over the place, but I'm fine with it. Um, but with this match, again, they were chanting Baby Yoda. They were just bored. I don't know. 
And actually, I've heard rumors that Disney's beginning to copyright all of the many memes and send out copyright violations for all the many memes of Baby Yoda. Disney, have some fun, please. Um, again, that's as far as speaking from a person who has many copyright no-nos. Have some fun. Let the people... Uh, it's somewhat original because they're using the same image and then they put like, music to it. It's great. That's actually really entertaining. I like to see what people come up with next. I think there's actually one wrestling one. Uh, I forget if it's Give Me What I Want. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool, though. Enough about that. <laughs> enough about what Full Sail is actually chanting. Uh, Donovan, he cannot suplex Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed's too big. Reed, again, overpowers Donovan Dijakovic. And then I think like halfway through this match, both of them look gassed. They had no idea what was going on. Uh, Dijakovic, again, very measured in what he does. The kicks look pretty good. This was a really slow place. Wrestled mania. But then Bronson Reed, though, he did the headbutt to the wrist. And as everyone who knows, Delirious knows that the wrestling match does not start until there's a headbutt to the wrist. But then eventually, uh, Dijakovic goes over. I forget what he did. I think he had like a moonsault. But it was a really, besides that, that, Besides the Yoda chant, if you, as a wrestling fan, start chanting Baby Yoda, yeah, you know the match isn't good. This was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we had Shotzi Blackheart taking on Bianca Belair. Poor Shotzi. I know who's winning. I know who's not winning this match. Uh, with this, I'll tell you what, Shotsky did a senton right onto the back of Bianca Belair. That looked like it hurt, though. And Shotsky, Shotsky's pretty cute. I don't know what it is. I know some, it doesn't seem like she's wearing, she has her fishnets on, but then it looks like she has, like, stockings underneath her fishnets. But someone said she's Filipino, so her skin is naturally that color. If it is, Shotsky is amazing looking. Hey, Shotsky. I'm single too, okay? Look, I'm from Florida. Um, I'll take you fishing. I'll take you to see the most recent Star Wars movie, which I will be giving my review to probably tomorrow or later after this video. Later tonight, I think. Maybe. We'll see. I have to. I have so much stuff to do. But, again, I think the thing is, and I just really noticed this, that during the commercial breaks for all the NXT matches, it must be cold something because they're just, like, trading strikes. So, there was that, and there was, like, like a spanking going on. That was pretty cool. Shossi is cute. I'll tell you what. That's where I saw some outer labia. Look that up in a biology book. Um, then there was low bridge on the middle rope, which was always funny. Bianca Belair eventually did go over. It was fun. I heard all the talk about Shosky Blackheart. This was the first time I ever saw her on TV. I'm impressed. And she's cute. Therefore, it's just a ham sandwich of a match. And then it's time for Oh Baskin is glory. Oh Baskin is glory. Not glorious. But Oh Baskin is glory. It was Damien Priest and Tony Nice. It's kind of a shock to see taking on Leo Rush and Oh Baskin is glory. Keith Lee, that was impressive. Uh, Leo Rush taking on Damien Priest. Oh, wow. Was there a precise difference there? 
And then eventually, Yulia rushed to catch and keep me, and wow, now it's big versus big. Gil Priest was tossed, actually tossed Keith Lee. That was pretty fun, though. And he had, like, his shirt and Santa hat. Listen, the sure way to be able to lose a match is to toss another man's Santa hat into the crowd. Boo, Damien Priest. Just ask the dirty, drunk, disgusting Philly fans what happened after they threw batteries and beer at Santa Claus. Boo, Philly fans. Uh, then, of course, Keith Lee hit the fun splash. It's always fun to see. <laughs> Tony and he's got pounced over the table. That was awesome. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. That's what that's worthy of, though. Being pounced over the table is worthy of a we're not worthy. Pounce is so it's just so it's just like a tackle, but it looks interesting though. Uh, Rush eventually evades so quick he can move on a dime um, all the way again. Did something from like the, the nail like a springboard bottom rope cutter. I've never seen any only he can do that stuff. Of course, Damien Priest had the clothesline from hell because it sent poor Lioris, like flipping somewhere. And then, then there was a camera shot of Keithley coming from like it, it was. I can mimic it, but but you just see like Damien Priest is there, and then all of a sudden, let's see here, I can mimic it. Ugh, there we go. See Keith Lee, very ominous. And he's just there. He just, yeah, I can't really do that good. My knees aren't that good. And I don't have the right angle, but that's okay. You get what I mean. He just like slowly rose up after being knocked off the ring. But that was great camera work. I know absolutely nothing about camera work. So I'm here in the Hobo Studios. I just know my computer has a camera. And I know on that r red button, red button up top means it's capturing and it's working. Um, when I do my live streams, I know there's a button there. I press it. It works because I see timer down there and <sighs> timer up there. Yeah, I have to figure out that it's everything's reversed. But again, that was an amazing camera shot. Eventually, Keith Lee does... Again, he actually, I think he pinned Damien Priest. That was pretty cool because then it was, I know Keith Lee, um, Leo Rush did the final hour from on top of Keith Lee's shoulders. So that was pretty cool. But again, this was a, this was a fun match. This was a match of the night. This was a surf and turf match. My only thing is NXT. The good matches are amazing. The mid-card matches tend really to be hit or miss. And a lot of times, there are people, and I understand they have to get the reps in, so it can't be a total squash. But then Roger Strong should like, beat him up more. Um, they should probably push Shotsky Blackheart a little bit more. Um, ah, minor quibbles. Overall, it was, it was fun. It was, it was a, I don't know, wasn't it? Let's see here. Surf and surf. Let me try and figure out something here. Cheeseburger, ham sandwich, soup. Eh. Ham sandwiches take the day. Next year was a ham sandwich. And that probably does explain a little bit as far as the ratings go, because I know NXT and AEW are always neck and neck. But the thing is, AEW's mid card, not the women's division. The women's division's a whole freaking train wreck. But the women's division, AEW mid card strong. And now that I'm back. Let's talk about some SmackDown, because that was on Friday night. 
I know there's tape, so there's probably a lot, so I'll try and keep it quick and simple. Because I, I think they actually gave the wrestlers off, because Monday, for Monday Night Raw, they had two shows. And I think on Friday, they actually did two SmackDowns. They gave the wrestlers a, a week off. Good for you, WWE. So again, there's spoilers out there. You've probably seen them before, but I like to, I like to see it firsthand, though. As I'll talk about later. Uh, so with this, oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. The WWE sense for walk with Elias. And Elias comes out. He starts, um, I think, talking via song about the match that'll happen. Good intro for an after Christmas SmackDown. I can't blame that. The first match was going to be Daniel Bryan taking on the Miz, taking on Baron Corbin. And so the Daniel Bryan's in the ring. And at least Corbin's playing up to the king. I think the last person to really be the king, the king persona, I guess Booker T, King Booker. Well, the only ones of note was King Booker, King Owens, and the macho king Randy Savage. Evan also was like, yeah. But those three really ran with it. And he's going with it. Until Roman Reigns comes out, all, all his minions are terrified. They drop him off his throne. Roman Reigns beats up Baron Corbin, so this match is postponed. Hmm, it's okay. Then we have the New Day and Braun Strowman taking on Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, Cesaro, and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, I don't think, got in the ring at all, though. He was just there. Wait a second, you know what? He was just there. Except for the one Braun Strowman thing. Whoa. Uh, the New Day, they start to go after Cesaro. It's pretty good. Um, however, once Shinsuke Nakamura makes his tag in, I'll tell you what, he did some suplex knee... Uh, he did a single knee backbreaker. That look, A uh, single knee backstabber. I'm sorry. That was amazing. I haven't seen that. I always do like it when the wrestlers do come up with something new and innovative. It's always fun to see. New Day 1. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Kofi Kingston, dude, he like got European uppercut over a table. That was amazing. That European uppercut Cesaro, one of the best ever. Cesaro again makes his comeback. Shinsuke Nakamura, he mocks New Day because he had Kofi Kingston and the octopus lock. Or, or the stretch, the, ab the abdominal stretch. And then he started to, to, to span Kofi Kingston right in front of Big E, and Big E was absolutely furious. You're like, ha! That's what you get. Uh, eventually, Sammy Smart, he actually pulls Braun off the ringside. He distracts Braun Strowman, so Kofi Kingston just gets beat up some more. However, eventually Braun Strowman does clean the house. However, Hubris shows up because Sami Zayn leads Braun Strowman right into a Kinshasa from Shinsuke Nakamura. That was great. Kinshasa off the off the uh, ring steps. That was fun to see. Uh, eventually, Sh Shinsuke eats the pin because he gets hit in the head with a pancake tray because he was going to use it. It took that away. He got distracted. And then I think it was a quick trouble in paradise, I think. I didn't catch the end of the match that much. But the New Day Rock. New Day Rock. And then, because it is the Christmas spirit, even Braun Strowman starts to dance the New Day. This match, really much so, more than anything else, had a house show feel, which made me feel warm and fuzzy inside. In fact, I'm going to put it back to its original rating. This was a surf and turf match. And now there's some dissension between Fire and Desire. Mandy Rose did not come out for Boo Sonya Deville's match. Oh. Could there be could they be breaking up Fire and Desire? Only time will tell. Good. Boo Sonya Deville. Mandy Rose has big boobies. And then Otis comes out of the middle of nowhere. Maybe. Maybe they didn't get that sweet loving in before. Oh! Uh, 
<laughs> or it's going to be that awkward, I love you, but I love you. Like they did with uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey. That would have been interesting, at least. Terrible, but interesting. Uh, when Otis comes out, I guess he, he gave <laughs> Penny Rose this ginormous fruitcake. Whoa, people still get fruitcakes out? I guess it's that time of year. That's fun. Otis was happy. For now. So in this match, it was Carmella taking on Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose is still hot. In fact, I made Mandy. Because she announced the word that she was single. <laughs> Big mistake. But that was a while ago, though, so I don't even know. Uh, Carmella comes out. Carmella's quick. Mandy Rose, again, she caught, she did something during the break, I think. Um, then the, it was a straight jacket. Oh, I know what that one. Mandy Rose went for a pin. That was a straight up cooch shot. Oh, you dirty, dirty cameraman. You're thinking like this guy, Hobo Tom. Um, then Manny Rose put her in the straight jacket hole, which does nothing but annoys you. Then there was a slap fest for a little bit, and Mella ate that turnbuckle. Wow, she's good at that. And then, I don't know, Carmella did like a super kick onto Manny Rose. KO poor Manny Rose. Carmella won. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And then we had Seamus. Is Seamus gonna be the next few? Because he didn't mention I don't knock on the doors of anyone. I don't I don't wait I don't wait for someone to knock on my door. I go out there and, and punch them in the mouth. So maybe we'll see a Seamus Alistair Black feud. Can only hope. As long as he's hundred percent, he's been out for a while with a neck injury. I, neck injuries always scare me because you screw up something in the neck, you're screwed up for life. Then we had Daniel Bryan taking on The Miz. Started off as a classic wrestling match. Again, this is the American Dragon version of Daniel Bryan. They were doing... They, they hit each other with a double fun splash. That's always interesting to see. Then Baron Corman's minions showed up. And they started to beat up them, so it was a no contest. It was a death that finished. Nobody wins. Nobody gets to showcase themselves. We're going to have a bunch, of, a bunch of local enhancement talent. Come in and cause a dusty bowl of soup. So yeah, so this match ended in no contest. Whatever. Then we had a moment of bliss with 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 Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross still looks looks like some little girl sitting in the grandpa's chair. She's way too small for those chairs. She like hops up. She's way too happy looking. I don't know what Lee Dean does to her at night. Better she's having a triple of something. Triple triple espresso quadruple latte extra sugar coffee. Only way I can describe it. Uh, so Lacey Evans comes out, yeah, starts talking. Uh, so she heads to the ring for a match. The next match. Jump. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, next match is supposed to be Lacey Evans is waiting in the ring for a ring partner. Dana Brooke's music hits. Dana Brooke gets dragged out by her hair by their opponents, Sasha Banks and Bailey. So Dana got jumped. Uh, eventually, Lacey Evans goes up there. They start brawling outside the ring. Eventually, once it gets in the ring, I'll tell you what, Dana Brooke is a lot smoother in the ring than she used to be. Lacey, uh, I think tag team matches work best for this foursome. Huh, huh, huh. I said foursome. Oh, that is the color of my goatee. I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting the Dr. Wagner salt and pepper look. I don't know if that's good or bad. But, oh, what was I going to do say? Uh, she's so smooth in the ring. The thing is, with this, it hides Sasha Botch 
boring Bailey and just not good Lacey Evans. Because at least they don't have to have they need the continuity, but it's there's no one focus moment so they can kind of restart themselves. I think that was I think next year I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have the pile of aluminum can award for like various things. And I'll write that down as I go. Again, just one more thing. Maybe for my second, maybe for my after my second year in March. Oh, that's right, that's coming up soon. I didn't realize that. But um, so with this again, Dana Brooke. Again, she gets double teamed a lot. Then she goes for the double axe handle blow. Yes, yes. Old school moves. She does step up in Sigari off of I think Sasha Banks thigh. Oh, that's pretty impressive. Lacey Evans. Again, gets a hot pass. She comes in. She starts wrestling out. Uh, kicked out. She actually kicked out of ba of Bailey's ba Bailey to Belly, which is great because the Bailey to Belly sucks as a finisher. Tana Brooke, she's actually really good. Her outfit looks good. It's, it's actually Candle Ray esque. Oh, gimmick infringement. Um, eventually, poor Dana Brooks forces to tap out of the bank statement. As Bailey pulls Lacey Evans out of the ring after Lacey Evans hits Sasha with the woman's right, cannot capitalize. Bailey interfered. Uh, Dana Brooke gets involved. I forget if she made the tag or not, but she was going to do something. Then Sasha Banks put her in the bank statement. Dana Brooke has to tap out. Sasha and Bailey win. And I'll tell you what, I was shocked in this. It was actually pretty good. It was botch free. It was always a good thing. That was a cheeseburger match. Then Dolph Ziggler shows up to try and woo, Man woo Mandy Rose. Whoa, wait a second. Didn't Dolph try this before? Indeed. Yeah, I think this is what happened in 2000. 12-ish. Sometime between 2011 and 2013. Just like Dolph Ziggler of like womanizing wrestler. <laughs> womanizing male wrestler. I think he was with AJ Lee and then with one of the Bellas, I think. But yeah, so so Dolph says, ah, this fruitcake you need to take the fruitcake from Mandy Rose. And Mandy says, yeah, Otis is being nice. He's like, yeah, well, you know what? This is fruitcake. And crushes Otis's mama's fruitcake. Boo. Anyone stepped on my mother's cookies? And I knew about it? Yeah, a little. There'd be a, some fisticuffs. Especially if I gave those cookies to a girl. And if I knew that girl let someone do that, it'd be like... We're done. We're breaking up. We're breaking up. Uh, then the next match, the main event of the evening. It was Daniel and Bryan taking on The Miz, taking on Baron Corbin. What, what was supposed to happen was the first match. But this was fun. Daniel and Bryan and The Miz start to beat up on King Corbin. In fact, anytime they could get King Corbin in the ring, he got double teamed, which is smart. Then... Again, once Baron Corbin's eliminated, it became Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. Eventually, The Miz beats up Daniel Bryan enough, and Baron Corbin then beats up Daniel Bryan a lot. And once Daniel Bryan's out of the picture, then he goes be beats up The Miz. So he's smart, smart, calculating wrestler. Again, Baron, again, he eventually picks Daniel Bryan and The Miz apart. And then, of course, they went back to double teaming Baron Corbin because that makes sense. Always beat up the big guy first. And the Miz begins to work over the leg of both Daniel O'Brien and Baron Corbin. There was a double submission attempt. Uh, Miz had very reminiscent of, I think, his U.S. or Intercontinental title match was the Miz, Chris Axel, and someone else. But the Miz put Baron Corbin, the figure four, 
And then Daniel Bryan wanted to reverse the pressure. He turned over Baron Corbin, still in the figure four. For therefore, the pressure gets reversed of the knees onto the Miz. But he put on the label lock on Baron Corbin. Miz is like, no. They start to brawl some more. And Daniel Bryan is trades chops, which is always good. Dolph Ziggler interrupts. So does Roman Reigns. They just beat up each other. Then there was the up rope. Oh, knee breaker by the Miz. Never saw the Miz do that before. That was pretty cool. Uh, Daniel Bryan. It didn't look like he had like ring burn on his elbow because his one elbow was bloody. But it's like when you get like carpet burn or rug burn, or it, it wasn't a cut per se. It was like a scraping off of like flesh. Still, it's not not fun, but it's different than at least it's not a gaping wound. We're not seeing bone and muscle like 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 Sabu. Uh, so that was okay. I think. Oh, I think my wash is done. I can get out, or I hope it's done. I heard it click. I heard something click. I don't know what my cat's up to. Now Daniel Bryan eventually puts Miz in a little bell lock. Miz has to tap out. But it's a Firefly Funhouse because we know what's going to happen at the Royal Rumble. It's going to be Daniel Bryan versus, I guess, The Fiend or Bray Wyatt. We'll see what happens with that. This match in itself, amazing match. It's a surf and turf match. I'll tell you what. I was shocked. As I was Even the, the non-wrestling segments were fun. This whole show, again, even though it was tape and stuff, it was a cheeseburger show. I think for the most part, the crowd was really into it. I mean, if, there's, if you're sitting through like six hours of wrestling, because that smacked on. Yeah, I'll check that next. But now let's talk about the NWA Power Hour. Um. His, oh yeah, is Stu Barrett injured? I know he's an announcer. He does have the voice for it. I'll give him that much. I don't know if he's injured or if he just likes wrestling but doesn't want to partake in the graps anymore, like a famous King Ross would say. Uh, Trevor Murdoch now has a contract. Everyone's so happy. And uh, the Pope, I know for a while he was in TNA Impact and he was in Ring of Honor. Is Ring of Honor having a fire sale? Because everyone seems to be going to the NWA from Ring of Honor now. So that's going to be impressive. Uh, first match, part of the TV title, which has a six minute and six minute, five second time limit. It was uh, Ricky Starks taking on Eddie Kingston. This was fun. Uh, the next pay per view is January 24th. I won't be able to cover that because I think I'm working at the racetrack. The, yeah, I'm working at the racetrack then. Wait, where am I? I don't know. 24th, 25th. Saturday's the 25th. Oh, I might be able to cover it. Oh, wait, that that interferes with SmackDown, though. I'll, I'll figure something out. I don't know. That's a while away, folks. Uh but with this, it was Ricky Starks and Eddie Kingston. It was fun. A lot of rope running. They tried to make it traditional match, but they realized, wait, we only have six minutes to do this. It was shades of delirious because there was a swerve. Um, Eddie Kingston ran off the ropes. Ricky Starks put his head down, and instead of doing all flippy stuff, Eddie Kingston put him in the headlock. Shades of delirious. <laughs> No, no, no. Ah, ah. Ah. Delirious is still the best. I care what people say. He What he would do would translate great in NXT. But in the main roster, he'd only be a comedy act. Terrible. 
Uh, this was classic wrestling again. They had the flying crossbody by Ricky Starks. Kingston did the exploded suplex. And now everyone uses a sing blade. I think. Who started it? I don't know if it was Seth Rollins as Alexander Black or Finn Balor as Devitt. But now everyone's using it, though. Uh, eventually, Ricky starts with an amazing Tornado DDT into the Buster Keaton, which is like a fairy tale ending, or whatever it's called. Uh, Ricky Starks moves on. He moves on in the TV Tag Team Tournament. This is a good cheeseburger match. Ooh, I could do that, too. Um, and then there was, I don't know, someone was out there. I forget. It was um, Roy Isaac was with someone Valentine. I'll tell you what. It was really cold in that stadium, folks, because something was pointing out. Oh. And then there was a Preacher Jones promo. Yeah, whatever. It was James from them versus Royce Isaac. Starts out outside the ring. Again, uh, Royce Isaac says his shoulder was hurting. His girlfriend, whatever, Valentine, had to give him a shoulder rub. Hey, listen. If she was my date, I'm not going in the wrestling ring either. I'm heading out to some empty janitor closet with her. Oh, I just didn't say that, did I? Uh-oh. Tell you what, I'd show her off to all the boys. I know that much. Um, again, Jane, James Storm starts to beat up. Isaac's Isaac's life. It's a count out. You're just like, I don't care. I don't go be with my woman. Hard to blame him. I mean, it was just insanely short. Again, obviously the heel delaying tactics. It was a can of soup. And Eli Drake comes out. And Eli Drake was either drunk or pretended to be drunk. He's drinking a bottle of a bubble, baby. Baby. And there's Caroline. I was shocked. I know Roderick Strong was singing, um, It's a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. But they were like caroling, Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him. Born the king of angels, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. I was shocked at that. NWA gets bonus points for that, just for that, singing a Christmas hymn on the YouTube. And doing actually a pretty good job. Although Eli Drake was drunk, he, he gave sense to drink champagne. Eli Drake was, yeah, he was Eli Drake. I'll tell you what, just because they sang a Christmas hymn on a public TV show, this is a filet mignon segment. And that's probably the first time I've ever given a segment, any kind of rating. But it's the Christmas season, though, folks. And then Nick Aldis comes out with the Rock and Roll Express. They cut a promo. Uh, then we have a six-woman tag match. ODB taking uh, and someone Vox and Alicia K taking on Melina, Thunder Rosa, and Marty Bell. And I'll tell you what. ODB has to get a pair of wrestling trunks because she was wearing a thong under that ridiculous high cut trailer park trash dress that was cut way too low in the top 
and way too high in the bottom. So she had on, I'll be honest, folks, this guy looked like a leopard print thong. You can say, no, it wasn't leopard. It was zebra. Really? There's a difference there? Yeah. The fact that you can tell it was zebra. I mean, one, you have, one, you have better eyes than I do. Two, you're really paying attention. I thought I saw spots on it and black spots. If I saw red spots, I'd freak out. But ODB, she has to get some rain care, though. Okay, she's actually pretty strong. I'll tell you with the NWA women's division, if they're known, they're really good. If they're not known, they're okay. They're n it's not quite the level of... I mean, all the NWA women's division is one definitely better than AEW's women's division. Impact has the best women's division. NXT is so deep. New Japan doesn't have any. So in women's division, it would be Impact, NXT, WWE, AAA, NWA, Women of Honor, and then probably last would be AEW's women. This was fun, though. Those that they were stiff. So I'll tell you what, those that headbutt to Melina, oh, it looked like it hurt her more. Um, Melina, she just rakes the eyes. Thunder Rosa's hot. I don't know what it is about Thunder Rosa. And I don't know. What does La Mera Mera mean? I should ask my coworker, what does La Mara Mara mean? <laughs> I know what Cerro Miedo is, but I don't know what La Mara Mara. Uh, then, then there was the, uh, she stomped a mud hole into what's her face. And they were stiff. And there was some, there was some nasty botch that off the top rope. That looked. Oh, bad. Then there was then um, eventually Thunder Rosa won with a shoulder shoulder breaker, um, like driver type combo. And then this was a fun match. I'll tell you what, it was pretty good. It was a cheeseburger match. And then because of this, um, they got to see who their opponent was going to be for the next pay-per-view. And Thunder Rosa chose ODB. Actually, Melina chose ODB for Thunder Rosa. Maybe ODB needs that money for her food truck. That's why she's back to wrestling. A lot of wrestlers are like that. Once they leave wrestling, they don't know what to do. Especially ODB. Well, I'll tell you what, ODB, she has to get a better outfit. because she's, Either she's going to fall on the top or she's going to show everyone coochie. That's going to happen one day, folks. I forget. I think ODB is like... She's only like 40-ish, though. But she looks older than me. Again, you can feel free to leave your comment about how old ODB is in relation to one hobo Tom. Then Tim Storm... look at. Oh, yeah. Melina's bra. Whoa. Then uh, Tim Storm came out for an interview. And then the main event was the question mark taking on Colt Boom Boom Cabana. I'm not too sure I like the Boom Boom part, but it is what it is. Uh, then there was the Chops versus the Mongrovian, the classic Knife Edge Chop versus the Mongrovian Chop. Uh, Colt Cabana it didn't seem too crisp in this match. Maybe it was too full of the Christmas spirit. I don't know. Colt Cabana is normally really good in comedy matches. This was not really a comedy match, though. Uh, he did go for a, queen, a, a string of quick pins. But then Colt... Oh, you could tell he's selling this pot because you can see his like, 
Even though he has a mask. You could tell because the bottom chin, just like mine, is moving. And if you have a beard, yeah, you can tell. Especially if it's a, a slightly off color than the mask. And there was a big splash, which is always fun to see. However, there was there was the Mongrovian Karate versus a bionic elbow. And then eventually Cold Commander went up once too often. Eight. The Mongrovian spike. The question mark goes on. Where does... And I don't know when Yano's going to show up to the NWA. Because he has a partner with Cold Commander sometime. This was another fun match. Spawn. Oh, <laughs> this is another fun match. It's a cheeseburger match. And I'll tell you what, then, then again, uh, Shooter Stevens comes out and he just starts like adding degrees to the question mark. He's, he's on a 10th degree Dan in Mongrofian karate. I don't think there's such a thing as a 10th degree. I don't think there's such a thing as a 10th degree Dan. I don't, wanna, I, I don't know a lot. And you guys can feel to correct me. I want to say it's only like three. Because I know in jujitsu, you have your white belt, blue belt. And I want to say it goes purple, brown, black. Then after black, it's black with a red sleeve. Well, black belt, black with red sleeve, black. One's like teacher, one's fighter. But then I want to say it goes to a coral pattern, which is red and white. Then I know for Gracie Jiu Jitsu, instead of having a red and white, they have a red belt. And maybe it's. Judo that's also has the red and white as like really the top tier belt. Again, feel free to correct me, but I don't think there is such a thing as a 10th degree band though. But that was it for NWA Power Hour. And again, this was wow, a trifecta of cheeseburgers. So, folks, uh, a couple things going on. Eventually, probably tomorrow, I'll probably work on it tonight after I edit this. I'll make another one, start to edit that one. Oh, yeah, I have to do that soon, too. I have to get out soon. I have to go hobo. I have to go do my job. But with that being said, probably later tonight, maybe tomorrow, you'll hear this guy's review of Star Wars. So I went to go see that movie. I'll talk more about that later. But more importantly, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, at AEW on, on New Year's up in Jacksonville at the Daily Theater. I'm going to be there live. Shout out. Say hello. Oh, I, I want to say one more thing. Um, actually, at the NWA taping, there was a person with a Friendo Club shirt. Howdy, Friendo. But back to me, though. I'm going to be live at the AEW show this New Year's Day. Because that's Wednesday. It's a brand new start of the year for AEW. So we'll see what happens. So I'll be there. So instead of doing a review for it, probably sometime on Thursday night at the latest. Because I know I have to go to work Thursday. So depending on... Yeah, because that's going to be... Actually, it might be. I don't know. We'll see. Probably Thursday night. Check out for your live action because I will be taking video clips. Um, definitely doing the entrances. And again, about two or three minutes per match, depending on what happens. So that video is going to be special. Again, you can catch this guy, Hobo Tom, up in Jacksonville. And if you would like your video shout out, you say, Hey, Hobo Tom, how are you? Or if you're a woman, say, Hobo Tom, I'm single too. So, <laughs> we'll see. Again, I'll probably get one or two shout outs, I hope. But other than that, everyone else have a good night. Uh, the rest of the week again, 
So very simply, this video will go up. My Star Wars review. Monday will be, of course, Monday Night Raw. Tuesday, maybe, I'll be doing some live streaming of Impact Wrestling. Uh, I won't be doing anything Wednesday, but then Thursday, I will post all my videos from AEW. AEW. Friday is going to be the typical SmackDown. And I don't think Sirius consult the book. January. January 4th. Is there anything special? I don't think there is. No. Oh, I have the races. Impact pay-per-views the 12th. Indeed. So I don't know. I forget if Ring of Honor is doing anything on, on Saturday, Sunday. We'll see. Again, with that, I bid you all a fair idea. And